So welcome, thanks for joining me. Today we have a session all dedicated to Julia, the Julia programming language. So we're still working on our 12 in 23 challenge on exorcism.org. And if I go down, you can see there's Julia down here, there's 52 exercises and three concepts. So as we do, let's start by looking at the about section for Julia. I've looked into Julia many years ago. I've written some code, not much. Um, so this is not completely new to me, but also it's been ages. Um, so let's see, the creators of Julia want to, well, okay, eat their cake and have it too. They describe Julia as a language that has the speed of C, the dynamism of Ruby, and the familiar mathematical notation of MATLAB. So that should work well with my maths background, I hope. Uh, they want it to be their favorite things from their favorite languages. Okay. Uh, string processing like Perl, glue like the shell, powerful but not impenetrably complex. Okay. Julia is a powerful yet clear and intuitive dynamic type system. It allows writing dynamic code and specifying types if additional expressiveness is needed for simplification or performance increases. The language features multiple dispatch, uh, which I remember at the time was a big deal. Uh, this is me commenting, uh, meaning it chooses which method is called based on the types of each argument. And this lets you write specific methods for certain types, which uh, while providing generic fallbacks and is particularly useful for mathematical code where it is not clear why an operation should belong to a specific argument. Okay, um, metaprogramming is easy in Julia. Code can be represented as data, as the data structure in Julia itself. So a program can transform and generate its own code similarly to Lisp, which is something we briefly touched on yesterday when we worked on closure. Large parts of Julia's base and standard library are also written in Julia, which is great because that makes looking into the source code for the language very much more accessible. Uh, understanding and changing it does not require knowledge of another language. If a library you need to use is written in another language, such as C, Fortran or Python, you can use simple interfaces to call them directly from your code. Okay, some sort of uh, foreign interface. Despite its young age, Julia is already being used in the real world in a variety of fields such as, but not limited to, finance, data science and scientific computing. You can find many showcase operations on the Julia blog aggregator and then there's a bunch of links. Okay, with this out of the way. So I think the big, the big deal here is the multiple dispatch functionality and the ability to define functions where we're not really specifying the types of arguments, for example, but also the ability to override this definition with more specific um, implementations for specific types. Let's see where we get to, starting from the usual hello world. Um, nothing uh, unusual here, no namespace, namespace specification. File extension is JL, and we're just gonna change the string as we know. Hello word. and uh, run our tests. I can see there's an explicit return statement. Let's see if um, we delete return, if this still works. It does, so we don't need to be explicit about returning stuff. And um, the syntax looks very straightforward. Nothing to say. We've seen, I don't know if you noticed, but between different languages, we've seen so many different ways of declaring a function. Uh, in terms of the uh, function keyword, we went from fun to fun to func, to function. We've done a bit of everything. Uh, okay, let's mark this as complete. Move on and look at more exercises. So for the Julia track, there's only a few, I understand a few um, tutorials available. I cannot see, I cannot see any concept actually. Uh, I cannot see an overview and then yeah, that's it. So we'll have to just be happy with whatever is recommended. At the same time, I wouldn't want to step into a medium difficulty exercise just yet. So let's see which exercises are available. All of them, none of them are locked. Okay. Let's go for leap, which is about leap years. Uh, given a year, report if it is a leap year. 
the tricky thing here is that a leap year in the Gregorian calendar, which is what we might be used to, uh, occurs on every year that is evenly divisible by four, except every year that is evenly divisible by 100, unless the year is also evenly divisible by 400, meaning four is a leap year, eight is a, is a leap year, and so on and so forth. 100 is not, 200 is not, 204 is, 400 is a leap year. Okay, um, so let's see if we can figure out a way of doing this without looking at too much documentation. How to debug, okay, we'll, we'll look into debugging later if needed, uh, but we can use this uh, annotation show and then whatever we want to print and that's gonna show uh, in the console or somewhere on the test results that might come handy later. Okay, so usually we will do with a remainder operator uh, or mod and so we'll check whether uh, the remainder of the division by four for year is zero. So if this is zero, also I'm gonna check that Julia remainder operator actually is remainder. Yeah, uh, what I expect it to be, it seems to, and it's equivalent to rem x y. Okay, uh, so something like is the uh, returned remainder zero. If so, we're probably dealing with a leap year, and it also has to be that this is not uh, year percent 100 equals zero. So these two conditions must be both valid or this can evaluate to false and so this is like an or again we'll have to check if that's the way or year percent 400 is equal to zero I also need to check comparison in, in uh, Julia Horizon. equal equal for equality aha because inequality actually <laughs> it used the ligature if one has that on the keyboard or can type it on the keyboard for more effect. Uh, I think we're good. And what about um, and or uh, Boolean operators? Let's see. So far, documentation looking great. Uh, double ampersand and double pipe, so that should work. So we're saying either, I'll, I'll put this in parentheses just for us. Um, either the year is divisible by 400 or it's divisible by four and not divisible by 100. Let's see how far we get. Not far at all. Okay, let's be happy with this and move on. Marking is complete. And going to the second more challenging exercise. Uh, let's see if there's one that resembles exercises we've done, exercises we've done already. And I'd really be keen to stay on the easy track determine if a sentence is a pangram. What is that? A pangram is a sentence using every letter of the alphabet at least once. The best known English pangram is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Ha! This sounds familiar. The alphabet used consists of ASCII letters A to Z inclusive and it is case insensitive. Okay, well let's see how we can work with strings in Julia then is pangram. Okay, uh, I know what I'd like to look for. So I would like to look for the string package and we take it from there. Ooh, uh, all right, we can turn, we can turn car actors into integers if needed. That could be an option actually. Although I don't know how portable this is, because it talks about 32-bit architectures. Hmm. Let's see. 
Okay, let's try. Because we could really go a bit wild on this. Uh, maybe we don't need to. You can do a comparison. Okay. So you can compare characters and they will probably be implicitly converted into integers and when it comes to the basics we can define a string we can escape quotes by just using triple quotes which is interesting go on a multiple line with the slash mm -hmm. oh that's very nice we can access can we we can access a subset of characters of a string I think mm -hmm. and then what else and begin and end are special keywords that indicate the start and end of a of a list or collection or similar okay we can do substrings and so on can we split into a list this is something that is coming to my mind because we could do split sort and check against the alphabet for example each index if you need to obtain valid indices for a string you can use next in okay let's not go there concatenation is also useful just string it resembles a bit what we had with closure where we had the string str operator and then well, function and then you'd pass all the string that you want to concatenate following that as arguments uh, interpolation is also interesting but not for this very exercise okay let me just check if there's a split functionality split on a string on a certain delimiter will return a vector of strings okay and then maybe we can do something on the vector let's see so if we do and we can use the show show uh, input like split input and we don't need to maybe specify the separator we can say it's the empty character what do we get we get uh, no math matching okay apple is truncated but this is the input we're getting so we're getting an empty string then we're getting Ooh, this is a bit awkward that the empty string probably returns a list with the empty character input returns yes so this is our out output okay um, and then can we I don't know compare that to the alphabet uh, Um, start speed can we sort maybe let's try sort sorting and related functions we can probably just call sort on the vector and see what comes out of it sort and then run this we'd expect to see the letters in alphabetical order as we do yeah And then we could discard everything that is empty or check that all the letters in the alphabet are there. So let's see. Julia Lang return alphabet not all words are of a given size, but just all characters. 
maybe there's a, an A to Z or something. Um, maybe we can, hmm, let's see if this goes anywhere near this. Uh, alphabet, ah, oh, there you go. Uh, no need for combinatorics, even just plain iterators. So if I do this, this is brilliant. If I do alphabet equals A to Z, for example, Sorry, uh, and then I show alphabet. Oh, I guess this is the probably the, the MATLAB syntax or similar to MATLAB syntax. Not that I remember. Alphabet A one Z. This is probably from A to Z with a step of one, which is good. Now, how do we go about checking for inclusion? And can we also do like comparison, for example, can we, or discard elements? We have sorting, iterator utilities. So can we, uh, map or something for X in a, or filter, can we filter? Iterators filter iterator. So for example, iterator filter is odd when where is odd is uh, defined somewhere. Can we define the function in place, for example, like uh, some sort of lambda? Because it would be nice to do something like iterators filter. On uh, on some some lambda here. Can we? Um, and this is a vector. Okay. Maybe I can just define another function again for the sake of experimenting a bit. So if I do. Um, not empty for example and say function not empty given a character and say uh, or actually alphabetic so alpha but let's say let's just say alpha uh, can I do something like a Can I do something like this where I do alphabet and do something like includes check for inclusion. So array or vector or whatever uh, includes uh, maybe in is already a thing in Operator in expression. Okay, no, that's not what I want. Check for inclusion. I want Julia Lang check inclusion. Check whether an array contains an object. In. Okay, yeah. Sometimes you can just try and say car in alphabet will this work um, can we say alpha here and see what we get uh, this looks a bit better right because we have only let's see so alphabet is okay and then we don't seem to have any empty string or character that is not an alphabetic one so i can actually suppress this maybe we'll get some more output and get a bit more a bit of confidence in what we're trying to do here
Wow, types really are massive here. Uh, base iterators filter, but I guess that's the cost of dynamic dispatch maybe. Or maybe this is just debugging, making it very easy for us to understand what's going on, but just on the limited char number of characters, this is a bit complicated and painful. Yeah, um, would that work if we say, can we now compare for equality? Like, would we be able to say equals alphabet? Or does this explode? <laughs> okay. This seems to somewhat work as expected. Let's see where it is that we are failing. Perfect lowercase. This is doing A, B, C, D, F. Okay. This should return true. But apparently this is false all the time. And then what else? Pangram with only lowercase. Um, oh, okay. Maybe maybe we're just. Maybe this is always returning false, and by means of that, yeah, <laughs> that's what's going on. Because alphabet is some sort of vector. This is a. Can we do a join and then just compare it to two? Again, a bit hacky, but just trying to explore a bit of the API. Join string. Join is a built-in function, so we can just join and just see something like join iterators. Equals what join alphabet? I don't know. Let's see. Show join alphabet. Show join iterators. Let's see what this returns. At least we get to an idea of how far we are. Um, alphabet looks good. This doesn't. Char in alphabet. This is always the empty string. Oh, that's painful. Okay, so our problem is here. We're not actually doing what we think we're doing here. When I filter on sort split, I think this might be the problem. If I was to remove the filter, I'd probably get a bit closer. Let's see. Although this is not what we want. Let's see. Yeah, this looks good. And then we just need to figure out why the filter is not working as expected. Uh, Julia. Um, filter let's see filter returns a copy of a collection removing elements for which f is false that's exactly what we want but we haven't seen how is odd is defined Let's do this. I want to be, let's try and, and be explicit about it without defining a function. What if we do join filter 
and we use an anonymous function here so that we practice as well we take a value p and then we apply some predicate to it in this case we want to check that p is in alphabet would that work Maybe. So we don't need this. No method matching not string. Okay. It's not like in this. P in alphabet. Filter. This seems okay to me. Or maybe in does not work that way. Oh, can I see a good example? Like inclusion is what? Is what I'm looking for. Hmm. Maybe if I go to vectors uh collections i'm gonna find something that i'm looking for length check length no i don't care uh in yeah a equals one three twenty four in a equals true okay so it seems like we are doing the right thing but this is not happening with us no method matching not is that the right way of reading this method error candidates uh, is this because this is a string rather than a character is there a difference between the two um, string string abstract string and then it shouldn't be really a problem right mm. method there are no method matching string hmm. okay okay let's see if I do show um, a in alphabet will this return true uh, let's see yeah it does what if i do double quote a in alphabet false ha so i think that's the problem we are that, that this is where we have a problem here what if I do this? Can I go from char to string? This is ah, painful if, if, if true. No method matching. Okay, what is it? No method matching. Uh, what is it that it doesn't like? It doesn't, it can't do that with strings, right? It doesn't know how to create a sequence of string. It knows how to create a, a sequence of characters. So can I turn a string to character given that I know that P is a character? So to char or car, maybe an explicit conversion like car um there's a valid here which one might check on strings i guess julia lang uh string to character conversion no please don't send me there uh, let's see Uh, car. Uh, 
Hmm. Is this is this a thing like something like? And I don't know if we're indexed on zero based index or one one based index. Probably one based. index ah of course um, what if I do P is empty can I uh, We just want to check for empty. Let's see, empty. No, no. Is empty not a thing? Okay. Can we do if? Can we do something like if p equals empty string or actually different than empty string? and p in alphabet is that something we can do without if and then again we might have to convert to yeah exactly we need to convert this to character can i just do this i don't know if it's capital or lowercase car Um, not matching. Uh, what if I just call car? P. Mm, I'm not really um, very clear on the closest candidates in the sense that I'm not I don't feel like this is helping me in any way. Um, P is gone. Okay. Mm. Um, convert string car and convert car string makes sense I don't know string what what is that even this is very confusing let's see if the wiki book helps us a bit um, string interpolation substrings that's okay we understand that and then for car in s and this is where we go into characters um print underscore okay this might be a way of doing that we could iterate over the list and check that they're all part of the alphabet but that is that filter I'm surprised also that so when we do for char in s we are actually getting uh, char type it seems but then when we are splitting when splitting we actually get so we do split sort and we're still on string and we would then want to Maybe we don't even need to split. Maybe we just do, can we just do sort and then work on the string itself? Maybe. No method matching sort. No, we cannot do that. What if we join after we do the sorting 
So we do join and then we iterate. Maybe the filter does an iteration. Would that even work? No method matching. Oh, I hate this. Okay, let's remove the join here and go for can I even filter on a string? Probably not. No method matching string. Run test. And this should be the problematic line, I guess. Uh, Let's recap where we are. So we can get to a string like this one, but what we'd really like to do is filter out, we can get to a string like this one, but we'd really like to filter out things that are not, hmm, okay, there's a few things we need to do. Non-alphabetic characters should go away and then we don't want any repetition. Can we instead do some sort of tally or tally? No, like count characters, do a group by, then compare to the alphabet somehow? Or can we do a union? Can we do a translation into set and then do a set subtraction? one set minus the other one. Maybe that's, maybe that's something we can do. Uh, but still, it feels weird that we are struggling to check if something is inside a list. Because I really want to have a conversion from one from character to string and the other way around. You can do a search. But well, maybe we can do search. I mean, it's it's a bit silly, but we could, or contains with string, okay. How about this? What if we do a for each? Again, very wasteful, but forget about everything else. What if we do for C in alphabet? Well, assuming that's how you do it. Um, and then we check for contains. Uh, where was I? Common operations. No? Was it? I think I lost that paragraph. String interpolation, substrings, connect, split. Split might be useful. Join, string. Because we could turn that into a string. No, let's not do that. And then. Contains. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong page. Uh, search is one option. Even offset. Okay. And it returns what? It returns the index where the value occurs. And what if there's no such a thing? Search x10. Okay, it returns, I guess, zero if the letter is not there. Okay. Let's try this then. Uh, I can do, take this as a reference. What we want is, 
I mean, in other languages, I would just produce and say, look, this has to be there. But here, search input ch. Can we reduce? Oh, sorry about the jumping around. We can probably just check for reduce. Reduce method on a collection, hopefully. Reduce op iterator, reduce yes, something like this. Can I do a reduce ampersand over? Well, it's a bit more complicated than this. Um, over alphabet. We do reduce true maybe we want to do use fold l fold l starting from true guess capital we'll see and then Oh, this is the operator and then there's the actual value okay starting run through and then the operator can be a function i guess right so we can say take the accumulation these are very very unhelpful examples i would want something like an actual function say you have some accumulator and the new value and we want to return accumulator and value where the actual v is search of v across input i know like i know it looks a bit dodgy but why not true not defined okay maybe let's try with lowercase then we can explain what we're doing no method matching fold l uh, with any any n. where does the collection go at the very end so alphabet is in the right spot true is the initial value it's in the right spot Am I using fold, the right fold, uh, guaranteed left associativity, V0 will be used exactly once. I'm expecting that to be the case. And then accumulator and search, no method matching fold L on this. What is it then? I think we have our own, like we know this is the spot we just need to figure out what the right way of passing a function is. Uh, let's see. Fold L. Let's see if we can see any, because we, we keep on seeing operators, but we actually want an, a function rather than an operator. Can we see that with a function? Fold J. No, um, not what we were thinking of. going into some obscure Google loop. Reduce plus sum, okay. Don't tell me I can't do that. Don't tell me I need to. What? Um, what if I just do plus is that something that it can do and start with an empty string or some string does it crash is 
step range character. Now I'm really, really intrigued. What if I put a number here? And 1 to 10 here. Can I do that? What? No method matching fold L. Candidates are fold L. What? Do I need to import anything? I don't think I do. What if I reduce? Reduce with no initial value. We're just experimenting here at this point. No method matching in 64. This is getting silly. What is going on? Can I just write this? What? Oh, this is an error. Okay, okay. This is actually an error on something else. Okay. On, on the trying to put I should just return true here and then keep on doing my experiments right uh, and we know that this doesn't work this doesn't work but what if I do yeah plus one 110 these should just work and just no it doesn't like that fold matching what if i use another syntax like this wow no method matching fold uh... And this still works. Isn't this surprising though, right? Why would the fold L not work? This is exactly what we have. But when I put alphabet in, it doesn't like it. Okay, now we are like now I'm copy pasting code from the documentation and it's not working. So what am I missing here? I feel like crying. Okay, scratch that. I will uh, settle for whatever the language lets me do which is if we can't fold this beautiful query that I came up with, um, what can we do? So I think it's good to keep this as a reference and can I do define some sort of result variable, set it to true and then do a for loop Let's see, control flow, can't express conditional evaluation, repeated evaluation, while or for, okay, this is what we want, something like for, and for character in input. Uh, res equals res and search now we want to do for a character in alphabet search the alphabet character in the input and then we want to return the result let's see Search not defined. 
okay is the search part of a package search I'm searching search search modes function method search. Oh, this would be a search function on string okay Julia search oh, always good to go Julia Lang search in string so it's suggesting match what were we looking at earlier mm, is there so what is this is this a an external package or is this out of date common operations let's see come on okay find next find last oh is it that it doesn't find a search method that returns a boolean oh, maybe they maybe they changed syntax the, the um, naming like find next find first find last okay we, we can do find first we're happy with that we can do find first different than zero and then I can explain once once we get this to work I can explain a bit more No method matching find first what right and maybe I need to rework the order of the arguments because character goes first then goes input at least we compile um, the empty string for character in alphabet we are so we're passing some tests but we're failing the ones where we're supposed to return false I think let's see res equal res and So on an empty string, what will happen? We go through all the characters in the alphabet and we do find first on character where in the input, so on the input where the input is an empty string. And we say that this should be different than zero. Okay. Can we somehow evaluate what this looks like when you, what is it, debug? or show show find first of a character on an empty string so if I do a on an empty string what is the value of that nothing what is nothing is that a thing what this is uh, okay is that a thing okay we're still okay it, it is a thing okay nothing is a thing good that we checked what about this what's going on here <clears throat> Pangram with mixed case and punctuation. Okay, we need to lower case the input before doing the checks. I don't like doing this, but okay. Can we even just say find first different than or not in zero nothing? Because then otherwise otherwise this is super painful <clears throat> ok 
okay yeah we can do that and so we can also lowercase the input lower case please uh, what's the convention on method names so far if I do case how do I <clears throat> up case Julia line up case string convert a string but we actually want lowercase but I guess lowercase should do so if you do lowercase on input wow this was painful one thing we've learned pay special attention on the version of the documentation you're looking at because between Julia version less than one and uh, Julia one method names have changed as you might expect from pre version one languages but this was super painful because we were looking at the wrong docs we were trying to call this method we had some expectations this has been renamed to uh, find first or like occurs and the order of the arguments is now swapped so do double check that you're looking at Julia v1 docs when uh, and I, I think v1 is still the latest I'm not sure to be honest maybe not uh, but yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get there when we need to so this was painful I wish we could have just gone for fold I don't like to solve these problems with regular expressions to be honest I think we are humans we should be able to get past regular expressions um, I don't like this solution because I don't like that we had to mutate the value of res and iterate explicitly over the thing over the alphabet so I'm sure there's much much better ways of doing this this was a massive surprise zero nothing so it makes sense if you think about it that if I ask you to tell me if there is an instance of a character in an empty string rather than saying no you're saying nothing but does it make sense really um, I don't know it doesn't feel very human but maybe it's the right thing to do from a consistency point of view in Julia bottom line is this was a massive surprise and I need to take a break because this was just too much. I've been beaten up by Julia. What? Let's pick another another exercise and then we'll get there in a, in a few minutes, okay? I'm scared. Okay, let's go mathematics because it looks like string manipulation, okay-ish, but iterating over stuff, not as okay. So let's try and really leverage the power of Julia and just go for maths um, I'll, I'll, yeah let's go for this so we'll do difference, difference of uh, squares but first let's take a five minute break and then come back so we're back let's do a recap of what we've seen so far uh, so we, we were looking at a couple of exercises one was about finding leap years um, given an year this was fairly straightforward, just a sequence of um, uh, Boolean logic statements, and that was it. And then the second exercise we looked into was about uh, figuring out whether something was a pangram, meaning if a string has all the letters of the alphabet. And after trying a few uh, approaches, uh, I settled for just going through a for loop across the alphabet and checking that each character is somewhere in the string there were some edge cases and quirks so the fact that find first called on an empty string returns nothing rather than zero as an index in Julia indexes are zero based sorry one based so the first element in an array will be at position one <coughs> excuse me so we can let zero have a spe special meaning of I didn't find anything 
Okay. With that in mind, um, with that in mind, I suggested we look at, let's look at differences of squares. Uh, okay, difference of squares. Find the difference between the square of the sum and the sum of the squares of the first n natural numbers. The square of the sum of the first n natural numbers is this. The sum of the squares of the first 10 natural numbers is 385. Hence, the difference between the square of the sum of the first 10 natural number and the sum of the squares of the first 10 natural number is 3025 minus 385, which is equal to 2640. Okay. You are not expected to discover an efficient solution to this yourself from first principles. Research is allowed, indeed encouraged. Finding the best algorithm for the problem is a key skill in software engineering. Very true. Mm. Oh, and this is pro problem six at Project Euler, which is a pretty amazing website where you can find plenty of uh, programming challenges, mostly maths based. Um, and see, since this is problem six on Project Euler, I would expect it to be pretty straightforward. Um, when it comes to implementing this efficiently, I honestly don't know what that means, um, but there might be some relationship between the sum of the first n natural numbers and the, and its square and the square of each one summed up. Uh, maybe we can maybe we can look that up. Sorry. So sum of first and squares. I don't know where we are. There's this nice formula. Sum of squares of n natural numbers n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Wow! Um, is that really the case? Brilliant! Okay, and then for the square of the sum, then we have another closed formula that we can use. So, sum of squares is the hard one. I don't know if Julia allows for parentheses that are not round ones, but let's just take it easy. And I think we have to be explicit with the times, multiplication operator, and then dividing by six. Okay, then for the square of sum, we can do, what is it? I think I seem to remember that would be like n plus one, n times n plus one, all divided by two. Is that the case if you have one and two? You do two plus three, six divided by two, three, which is the case. And then the difference would be, so which one is the biggest one? The sum, if we square the sum, we get a bigger number than by summing the squares, yeah? Square of sum, for n minus sum of squares for n uh, we are far uh, expected integer got a value of type float from square of sum best integer equals one why is that the case? Do we need to cast an integer or maybe just int? Because this is always an integer because we are multiplying n and n plus 1 divided by 2. There's always going to be an even number divided by 2. Square of sum int is not defined, so what can we 
int 64 of this. I should really look up uh, number casting. It would be nice to have some. Okay, one test passing. <laughs> Everything else is failing. Okay. Square of sum of five. Oh, I forgot to just square this, right? I took the sum of the first n integers and then I didn't square it. Can I do it with the... Okay, let's do... Julia Lang power. So the curly thing. Not curly, just what do you call that? Hat sign, I don't know. Um, and did I square the... No, yeah. Okay, so sum of squares uh, one should equal one. Sum of the squares of numbers up to the given number one. Sum of squares one equals one. We're still getting a float. Oh, this is so annoying. Okay, so we first raised to the power of two, then get a float, then turn it into an integer. But I'm curious to see if there's a better way of doing that where we don't have to go into floating points. Sum of, oh, we're looking at the second one now. Okay, my bad, my bad. So can I revert this change, leave it like this? And look at, sum of squares yeah so sum of squares this should just be the number already and i can do int 64 of this Ta -da. okay uh, i found it interesting that i had to convert to integer i wonder if we are missing the trick by and we can tell julia to stay within the integer because we start from integers. And maybe maybe we actually can. Maybe there is such a thing as uh, integer division, right? Uh, with this symbol here. And so what if we do this rather than and this because we know that we're always gonna stay within the integers. Is that gonna be oh, enough? Let's see. Because that would be much, much nicer and we don't have to convert. We still need parentheses because we are going to the power of two. Nice, I like this much better, right? So we have much, a much, much cleaner uh, solution with the uh, integer division. Well done, Julia. Moving on. Uh, let's stay into the mathematical realm, I suggest. We have a rotational cipher. I don't want to do that because there's going to be some strings. Although we could because, you know, that's how you learn. So let's, fine, let's do that. Let's get into this. Um, create an implementation of the rotational cipher, also called sometimes the Caesar cipher. So the idea is you have your plain alphabet and then you rotate the alphabet by 13 places or X places and you map each letter to the corresponding one in the cipher. Okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, we're not gonna look into bonuses just yet, but let's see if we can do this. Uh, oh, wow, we have nothing, okay. What does the, oh, but we have the tests. That's nice, that's very handy. Rotate. So we're gonna be defining the function, function, rotate, and and we're gonna take the num, like an index. This is how, mu how many characters we want to go uh, we, to rotate and then the character we want to rotate. And I think we can just go, we saw this earlier, right? We can get into ordinal uh, do the sum and then go back, right? Uh, can we? 
uh, so strings I seem to remember we could go int right I think that's what we should do we could do int of ch we just need to make sure we don't go beyond z so we do plus index <laughs> so okay let's take the base character is is the integer representation of a right and we don't want to go so how are we going to do this just you know maybe there's ways of doing it a bit nicer but if i take a away from in ch sum the index yeah this is the index corresponding to the letter from zero to the letter so zero based index right we add the index we want to shift by we take the remainder on um, up to z which is the last character and again we have to do int z minus int a because these are all offset by some value and then once we have this number we offset the whole thing by int a something like this and then of course we want to go back into the realms of characters with char so we want to do char of this let's see will this work for strings probably not let's see a not defined a not defined oh sorry this should all be actual characters we can then later extract to variable if we see that this works otherwise we'll have to start from scratch yes yes and then i expect these to fail for all the strings yeah um can we do can we go from which is the same issue we had earlier right can we go from string to character i'm tempted to do this But then can we define this twice one for once for characters and like can we do Julia because this is getting a bit ridiculous right Julia Lang but we can't do the conversion within the uh, function itself right because we don't know but maybe there's a way of doing some polymorphic polymorphic function can we do this Oh man, what is this? Multiple dispatch. Yes, give me this. Yes, something like this. Um, I don't know, like, would this work if we do like where this is a char? Then we have another definition where we do this, but when this is a string, and the first thing we do is we do we do ch equals string. How does the test actually work? Oh, you can rotate an entire sentence, yeah. Okay, so we'd have to. Can we do a for each again? And maybe we saw something like it earlier. Mm. 
like uh, four. Um, no, was it like a four ch in string to rotate? Would that even work? Just coming up with syntax here, not even know what we're doing. No method matching rotate int string. Why not? Just to find it here. Let's see, Julia Lang iterate over string. We did it earlier, right? I don't I really don't want to do another for loop. Basic string iteration. For x in y, okay. What else can we do? What is this? What is this operator? I want it in my life. What is this? Is this a thing? Have they been hiding the best feature of Julia? What? Okay, how does this work? So infix operator, infix notation and we go some sort of pipe arrow character do something with character let's see oh come on is this is a thing I don't know. okay so what string pipe arrow and then character into Rotate. All tests failed. Let's see. No method matching rotate string. Did I? Oh, was I supposed to just go? string rather than really this is the work we can go back and read about this a bit more okay now we completely destroyed the okay so now this works and this stack overflow rotate this doesn't work and is this a thing mm-hmm yeah this is a thing can we do uh, rotate can we do a join on this Again, I don't know if this is the best way, but it reads good enough. And I really need to investigate if this is a thing. So join. So when the modulo, uh, so we're doing We need a plus one somewhere. Because we're doing, say we have 25 letters or something. And we do
let's see because uh, this, this is probably the problem when we go and do like where is the brace even Twenty six A goes into B. Is there a plus one here? And then we can do a bit of drawing and and, and see if this gets us somewhere. So this is working. This Anytime we go over, okay, let's do a bit of drawing. I don't know. Say this is 60. Okay, I wanted to go from the integer, from the character to the integer, then remove the go like minus int a plus idx which might be say 26 let's say let's say we want to do uh, shift by 2 okay that should be percent 3 uh, what I'd like it to be is 62 minus 60 which is 2 and then plus 1 right so percent is percent uh, let's say mod 62 minus 60 plus 1 which is why we went for int of z minus int of a plus 1 because that's the cardinality of the set of characters yeah stays at 2 okay but the other values will change and then we shift again we shift again by oh we shift again by a, right so plus 60 so we go okay and this goes to 62 that seems to work what if we go for something a bit more extreme so what if we add 3 and we go for a full round okay so this becomes a 3 this becomes a 4 when we do mod 2 is it mod, mod 3 yeah did I get it wrong uh, yeah no, no that's fine yeah so mod okay so mod 3 this becomes a 0 yeah and mod 3 this becomes a 1 and so what I want is for everything to stay the same so plus 0 this becomes 60 and this becomes 61 and so it's basically like an identity uh, so 62 so to recap we're doing minus int a plus the index mod the difference plus one between between int z and int a plus int a so to me this looks okay because we're doing int of the character minus int a to normalize then we are adding index and then we are taking the mod on this Ooh, I'm wondering about precedence of operators as I often do so the mod is definitely this but do we need to, to do this we might have to wrap this in parentheses right because we have we're taking this and then doing the module better a bit better yeah welcome to the magic word of precedence of operators yeah so percent was uh, being the the mod was being taken on idx rather than on the sum of int ch minus int a plus idx and that's where the issue was coming now all we need to do is uh, figure out how to filter out uh, white spaces I don't know if it's all about the white spaces uh, so it's like rotate function full string yeah I 
think we need to focus on full strings, yeah? So if it's all about spaces, oh, there's also some punctuation, yeah? So what do we do? What we do, we, we could do it some sort of if, ha, <laughs> we go back to the alphabet. <laughs> we can do something like if, ch in a z then rotate else just ch is this fine can this be evaluated if expected end okay maybe we do have a, a ternary operator and we can use that let's see Not defined yet. I keep on forgetting about this. And let's actually look at the if then else Julia line if else, or even like a ternary operator short circuit. No. Yeah, we have a ternary operator, yes. Okay, we do have a ternary operator. So we can do ch in this, question mark, then rotate. Otherwise, don't rotate. Surprise me, Julia. Okay. Failed by Julia. And now we're failing because we're not doing the thing we're supposed to do anymore. OMG rotate five. This is a test that used to pass and now it's not passing anymore. Because the test is not, it is never evaluating to true. in AZ. Do I need to put... No, I don't think I need to, right? Julia Lang check if uh, car in set. Uh, we always go back here. Let's see. Um, One sec, let's see if we have some method. Like inclusion included. Maybe we can just call is pay or is is alpha is maybe we do is al that's what we were missing maybe? Like an if an is for something is letter, haha. -ha. We're going to go back to that thing. Can we do if C is letter CH? Oh, uppercase, lowercase. Right. Okay, we're, we're almost there. What's going on here? This is getting uh, a bit annoying. These are passing fine. These are passing fine. What's wrong with this? How could we get this far? 
Oh, the capital thing. Oh, what do we do the, with, with capital stuff? So what are we doing here? We're, uh, uh, okay, fine. Uh, can we? Okay, we need to. We need a way to deal with capital letters. Yeah. Though we seem to be alright with some examples somehow. What is breaking here? Because uh, we're we're just mapping G to like L to. With 1821, we're just mapping L to some weird thing. So, none of that applies anymore, right? We can't, we can't just apply the same transformation if we're looking at a capital letter. Um, Maybe we can change the off offset. Okay. We can do if is it is it capi is capital? Is uppercase. Or we do is lowercase. CH. Let's see. Again. Uh, Let's get this to work and then we'll think about how to make it right. So if it's lowercase, then the base is int of A. If it's not, it's an int of capital A. And then we do B equal Z, more likely. If Z is, if CH is lowercase, then we take Z. Otherwise we take capital Z. And then rather than int a, we're going to be using a rather than int a, we are replacing with a and rather than int z, we're using z. And same here for a. And let's see if this makes a difference. There you go. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I overcomplicated it. Maybe, yeah, maybe if you could operate yeah maybe an if then else sort of thing could could have worked much much better right because you could just say look take the integer representing the the character uh, add the wanted shift and then if you're exceeding a certain value then go back to the beginning and compute the remainder right but at the same time this is I think this is decent. I kind of like this notation. It's very, uh, it's very Python-esque, right? Where we do a, a for comprehension uh, list, right? And then we can just join that. You know what? I'm overall, I'm happy with this. I would like to know more about this syntax, though. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll get there. Now, with this knowledge, right? Can we go back to? The previous example, the previous exercise, we completed about the pangram, right? And this time we could just use the function is letter, right? So rather than doing this and finding first, was this even a thing anymore? Four C H in alpha. What were we doing? Oh no, we, we we took a different approach. So yeah, no, that doesn't help anyway. But his alpha is very powerful. I think I should have spent more time on the string documentation. It's just that it's a bit annoying to navigate, to be honest, because it seems like you have to browse through all the methods. Oh, we can also see the version of the docs here. 185 that's useful okay okay folks last exercise we can do this very i'm, I'm pumped about this because it's going to be the last exercise to dominate the language 
word count, given a phrase count, the occurrences of each word in that phrase. And I know, I promise I wouldn't be doing more string manipulation, but I can't resist it. I'm gonna do that. Okay. Uh, given a phrase, count the occurrences of each word in that phrase. For the purposes of this exercise, you can expect that a word will always be one of a number, a simple word, or a contraction. When counting words, you can assume the following rules. The count is case insensitive, so we're going to lowercase everything. The count is unordered. The test will ignore how words are count uh, and counts are ordered. And other than the apostrophe in a contraction, all forms of punctuation are ignored. The words can be separated by any form of white space. Okay, let's see how we can go about this. So can we first thing off? Can we split the sentence? We can also lowercase it. Oh, I hate that. Okay, lowercase. We can lowercase it just to be sure. In lowercase the sentence we can split and will split actually work like we want it to work split with a oh there's also a very nice keep empty which we can set to false amazing well, yeah definitely read the docs more um, and then a delimiter Or R split, maybe even better. Oh, starting from the R. Okay, I thought it would work with regular expressions, but no, never mind. So the delimiter would be any sort of white space. Can we just say S? It's not. Can we use regular expressions? Okay, I'm already regretting the step I took, but okay, uh, regular expression of thing, maybe they are, maybe you can just say dash s, uh, slash s, right, and they can say keep empty folds, mm. no, okay, on any space can we show what we get out of here substring something something word one of yeah this looks fine this looks fine but we actually want to break on uh, any white any white any form of white space so is that white space Wow, this is maybe cool, yeah? Because we can strip any character that we don't want. But we have to list that. Strip, okay, let's say whatever. Is space. We can maybe L pad or. Mm. Space character is space. Straight. No, we actually want to split on white space rather than this split. Hmm. Okay. 
or maybe replace or maybe map replace oh this is brilliant not is ASCII into replace non ASCII cards with spaces wow this might be it right we could replace and is that a condition of sort is ASCII to space can we say no or white wow. is white space uh, is space was the function is can we do that? Can we say is space? Replace it with the space character. Okay. I think this might work. And we get us get to a list of words. And now all it all that is left to do is to count the words. Uh, we also wanted to remove any dots and commas and special characters didn't we so maybe replace is space or can we also do replace non because we are, we could also do wanted to replace anything that is not a letter but replace seems really really powerful message wow what is this but I also like the other one where it went with a function basically no this maybe I can do or, or also this one right filter this but this would be amazing if I could do a filter on string and specify a function here right if I could do filter uh, here and then the function name so filter but rather than saying is ASCII, I could do from character to character is letter. Would this work? Because then I want to end. Yeah, it works. So I can say is letter or um, ch equals the apostrophe. Oh no, how do we do that? Is that an actual? It's there. Okay, do we need to escape? Is that is that the quote sign or something else maybe? Yeah, it is the quote sign. So can I do this? Uh, 
and yes again I could do regular expression and stuff but why would you want to do that um, what was expected here work count of this should be an empty dictionary interesting because the maybe regular expressions are the way here because we want to say there's some letters and then potentially an apostrophe and then something else let's see well you know what so this is our list right our array of words and then we want to go through the words or word in R we want to have some sort of dictionary that we update and I'm not gonna try and make it any nicer than that Julia dictionary what have we got dictionaries We start from an empty dictionary, I guess, and then is there some way of counting? Count I, okay, no, group by group, no group by. Because reducing would be a nice way of doing this, but I still don't, I'm still not too familiar with this, with what can and cannot be done with this, a reduce function. Although maybe now we are ready. We could do r dot, well, reduce r. And then the initial value is given by if whatever in it. Yeah, which is an empty dictionary. Could this work? And then you have the actual operation. So the iterable is R, and then you have the operation, which is a function from which has an accumulator and a value i and returns for now an empty dictionary let's see if this works <laughs> empty dictionary that works Okay, so the reduction is working, and if I do, how do you work with dictionaries, I guess, that's the question. Uh, you can... What does idict do? We don't care. We don't care. So there's a get operation which accepts a default. That's amazing. Okay, so one would do, or if I return act, just making sure that the order of the arguments is right. Yeah, so we would do get act i or zero if it's not there, and then we would set what's the difference between get and get exclamation mark oh 
oh it actually adds the entry probably How does this work with the block? Get dictionary key, do default value calculated here. Okay. Okay, maybe maybe this is our the variation we're looking for is the exclamation mark. And then how do we set values? I guess a set, but let's see. If We can do that in a nice way. Set. No, we don't want the set. We actually want to set a value, uh, which uh, yeah, it's not, we're not going to find here. Let's do Julia Lang set value dictionary value. Change the dictionary value in an array, in array, no. No. Let's see if we have better luck looking at this. Oh, we can access with the thing, yeah. Oh, we'll just that then. And then equal. What, what is get about then? Is it just about the default value? Probably. I did Z. Okay, yeah. Nothing for us to actually check. So we can keep this here. And what we can do is, is dict um, equals returning that. So we can do ack. How do we do this? We do. I don't want to do is key and all that, but maybe we have to, or has key. Okay, fine. So we do has key, ack i, and then if it does, we do, we do ack i plus equal one, if it exists. Otherwise we do ack i, equals one and none of this nonsense i think we should pass a test or two not even one okay evaluated mm. and i need to return right i need to return the act now stretching the syntax a bit Uh, ack is not defined yet, yeah, uh, I guess this is not, uh, maybe we can do something very hacky, we can say run this and ack, I hate this but let's try and go with that for a moment, non boolean int use, okay. Um, What about a comma, single line for Julia Lang, single line uh, function, uh, something, x, y, g equals f, let's see, anonymous function maybe. then we can return anonymous function okay anonymous function what if we want to go sort of multi-line 
we don't seem to be able to but we'll find a way so what if I just do then function and then start end that's also an option I'm can't put like curly braces or anything right curly brackets or something or no I'll just go function let's try that can I even use that as an anonymous one function with a function this that and this is legal mm, a bit better forgot the white space maybe and so removed everything okay passing some tests now I think it's just a matter of figuring out how to get rid of the um, so we're, we're including the apostrophe because we don't want to discard that but if the apostrophe is not is the only thing in the in the, in the is a word then it, we don't want to count it yeah okay and can we define a function and call it um, is allowed say equals this and go from is allowed to that seems to work somewhat and then we still have the problem where we need to do something about the quote oh also is number is fine so or is number is okay we have a set of allowed characters again this is a time where maybe thinking about going regular expression would have helped his number is not defined was it is um, not his number but is his letter is definitely a thing and then is a digit of course is digit is digit because it's a character right And hopefully we'll only fail. Okay, no words is still a problem. Where we have the apostrophe uh, there, and then quotes are a problem. And how do we specify the regular expressions in Julia? Is it Julia line regular expression? Oh, whatever starts with R, okay. And so, what is it that we're doing? We're saying if something we're splitting on what? We're splitting on. I guess we're, we're maybe replacing. Uh, quotes at the beginning of a, of a word with uh, empty spaces so let let me try that so if we do replace on this uh, so sentence okay and then comma is allowed to something and so we can do what a regular expression replace a regular expression with yeah still arrow and then we can reference the captured things the captured values with dash 
one, a slash one, maybe. Okay. So we can say, if you see something starting with a quote, right? then replace it with an empty string right okay why would this not work now just trying random changes so we've already done so for example if it is surrounded by spaces then kill it right and this at least passes one of them um, and then the other thing we want to do is um, if it is at the beginning and end of a word then kill it and again so yeah this would look like if we have word slash word plus and then this then replace that with the word or slash one on the s maybe the s is for interpolation Mm -hmm. and finally the situation where you have the quote by itself and so what happens then we can special case that or so here we're replacing with an empty one and then because it is allowed and that's fine and then if it is rounding a word we kill it and then if it is on its own then we kill it but I don't want to do another replace but fine so this would look like a final replace where we say if you spot no actually we don't even need this if, we, if you only have the quote then replace it with an empty thing and this is in the case where not even then right so this is where you have uh, yeah I think the right way to approach this would be to filter that out so after we've gone lower case and maybe after we've split we could just filter filter and uh, filter we can check this out filter trying to remember how it works so function first function and then vector okay so we would function the function would be ch ch different than the empty string actually um, then the, the apostrophe just like that whoa Whew. this is it incredible i missed the message hello first time chat nero mcmuffin thank you for showing support um sorry i was a bit absorbed by the exercise we were going through so okay this looks good enough to me i'll try and refine this later um but in the meantime thank you for watching 
I'll mark this as complete. Uh, and uh, of course, what's clear is um, it took me a while to get used to Julia and um, there are some, some quirks. In maybe, maybe I should have taken a more, I think maybe it's one is better off taking a more um, principled approach to learning Julia. Uh, I don't know if that can be said for all the languages, but it felt like exploring the documentation, although it seems quite exhaustive. Um, didn't take me where I wanted. I don't know. Maybe I need to think about this a bit more and then I'll conclude something. But the great news is if we go to the dashboard and the 12 and 23 page, we can now see that there's only three spots left, which means that I need three more programming languages. I'll probably just ask the question to the community again and ask what you'd like me to focus on. I think I should look into Kotlin anyway. It's time, it seems very, it seems a language that people would like to see. So likely that that might be, you know, that will maybe be the next step. Um, Demeron, very cool. Great to see your process of solving these exercises and improving your solution. Thank you, Demeron. I, I hope it's not too slow, but hopefully you can watch this again on, on 2x or, or 3x. Uh, but, but, you know, to show the, the thought process and to show how you can get stuck and then eventually figure it out is also part of the effort here. So I thank you for appreciating that. Um, that's really nice of you. Okay, I'll see you, I don't know if tomorrow or on Monday, but I'll see you very, very soon with more programming languages. Uh, again, I think Kotlin is definitely uh, coming next, uh, but we could also look into other options. Why not? Thanks again for watching.